Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's program. It's wonderful to see you all. It's Andrew Murray here from Generation Builders. I want to thank you all for watching. If you're watching this live, I want to encourage you to share the video, um, to like it, to uh, drop some comments, let us know um, where you're watching from. It's wonderful to see you all. I'm just going to wait for a few more people to log on. We're really excited tonight. Uh, to have a special interview, so I'm going to introduce our guest in a moment. And I want to encourage you, um, if you want more information about Generation Builders Ministries, you can go to our website, generationbuilders.org. You can sign up for our mailing list there. Um, you can see all our YouTube videos and all kinds of teaching on there. Also, if you wanted something to read right now, go on Amazon, search. You can buy my books on uh, The Miracle Table, on Seeing the Church, The Sound of Heaven, all that stuff's there on Amazon and paperback and Kindle. Uh, but again, I want to thank you all for watching. I'm really pleased and excited that today uh, we have a good friend of mine, James Aladrin, with us. How are you doing, James? I am doing very well. It's good to be with you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. I've known James, uh, well, myself and Laura, we've known James and his wife, Rebecca, for quite a number of years now. And um, they lead a ministry called uh, Pressed on. Uh, they're based up in Manchester, but really have a have a ministry now that's reaching not only the nation, but the nations of the world as well. So uh, James, why don't you just start off for those that don't know who you are. Tell us what is pressed on, um, what do you guys do, uh, yeah. how you start, all that kind of stuff. Just tell us a little bit about pressed on. Yeah, so uh, this year marks the 11th year of Prayer Storm. Wow. And so, uh, we, yes, we've been going for a while. And it's been really interesting because it's not something that I kind of planned or premeditated or felt like I had an ambition to do, stumbled into it, really. I'm not going to go into the story, but we started in 2009. And uh, our heart has been from the beginning just to seek God, to press into him. And then on the back of that, we started feeling a burden for the nation, for the youth. And so we started mobilizing young people to fast and pray for the nation. And over time, that evolved and started to gain momentum. And in 2014, we got established as a charity. And so uh, we've been running as a charity since 2014, my wife and I, and we've got a, a, a few people on our staff as well. And so what we do is we mobilize, organize prayer events and prayer gatherings, but we also re resource the church uh, in teachings and equipping and prayer. And we also do things focusing on leadership in prayer. So raising up prayer leaders. And then we do uh, worship. So my wife is a worship leader. Music is a big part of what we do as well. And, and so they're just different expressions and media as well. So we do, uh, do regular programming uh, for different uh, Christian channels. I also do our own programming uh, for YouTube and different things that we do. Uh, but our heart, at the core of who we are, our DNA, is a pursuit for God, is a heart to seek Him and to see Him move in the nation and in the nations. So we're passionate about a great awakening, sweeping the nations of the earth. And we know the starting place is the place of prayer. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, kind of the next question is really kind of, um, kind of really the heart of what I wanted to talk to you about today. So. Uh, feel free to take your time and just unpackage this a little bit. But um, we in the United Kingdom, we have had, I mean, just the craziest uh, few months, right? I mean, a few years, really, but certainly the last few months, there's been a real acceleration. I mean, we had the general election. Uh, yeah. Then we had uh, Brexit finally happening. Um, uh -huh. Now, of course, I mean, I know COVID-19 is all over the world, but uh, certainly from us, our perspective in the UK, I mean, people are dying, um, you know, churches yeah. are, are, are not meeting physically, we're on lockdown. It's just kind of one after the other of these huge kind of um, things. I mean, obviously stuff's always happening all the time, but it's like yeah. these events are huge kind of huge milestones. So I wanted to ask you um, kind of three big questions, really, which is, um, firstly, uh, what have you been doing as press on as a ministry in the midst of all this that's been happening in, in, as a nation? Um, how crucial is prayer at this time? And also, what do you feel that God is saying and doing in the midst of all of this upheaval and all this shaking that's happening? Wow, those are great questions. Um, can I just say, before I start answering them, remind me if I miss anyone out, because there's quite a few. 
can you ask me about? So I'll start with the first one. Okay. So the, the, the first one, you said uh, what, what we've been doing as a ministry in this time. Well, obviously, like many other ministries and organizations and businesses, we've been impacted by this. We've had to cancel, obviously, all, you know, all our events in this season. And so, uh, you know, I've been at home with my family as well. And um, there was some time where my wife and I were just talking and I guess just discussing about what's going on in this season. And I was saying to my wife, I feel a real sense of there's just a lot of this is in the beginning of the lockdown in the early days. So I was saying to her, I feel a lot of fear in, in the atmosphere around us. But she also felt that when we went shopping every now and then, you know, to to get some groceries and things like that. And I said, I feel like there's a vacuum being created that we need to release a sound into. And when I said we, I guess I was feeling like the church. And that went on for a while. And I said to Rebecca, I, said, I think we should just try out doing like a, a worship and prayer night and just try to just stream that online. And, you know, it was a massive learning curve. And so we just put it on and I just put a message out on my Instagram and said, hey, would anyone be interested in, we just wanted to put out a night of worship and prayer and just stream it from our living room. And so we just did the first one. I put it on my Facebook page. And, you know, there was quite a few people that did watch and it was great. And then we thought, well, let's, let's do it again. So we did again the second night. And I think by the second or third night, um, there was just this sense that God was in this. Not because people were watching it, but it was just because there was a sense of this is what the Lord is calling us to do. And it, it felt like he answered that that thing I was feeling inside of that vacuum. I felt like we needed to release a sound of worship and prayer. So we started on the 24th of March. And tonight we're going to be on night 36. So it's been every night for an hour wow. from uh, 8 30 to 9 30 and we've seen incredible things happen you know people healed people saved people encountering god changing atmospheres in homes you know and and it's it's amazing to to see those things happen but as we started doing this it was clear to us that one god was commissioning us to do this uh because there was a grace to do it and by the way a grace to do it doesn't mean it's not hard or doesn't mean it's not challenging uh, we just could just sense god on it so we just stepped and leaned into this more. And, uh, and we just had to feel the momentum build. And then the Lord starts to speak, starts to, speak to us about 2 Samuel 6, 11. And it's the passage where the Lord talks about, where the Bible talks about Obed-Edom. It's a guy who hosted the Ark of the Covenant in his home for three months because uh, uh, a guy was judged for trying to touch the Ark, a guy called Uzzah. And so David was scared, and so he didn't want to take the ark back to Jerusalem as he was originally planning. So the ark was taken into this guy's house called Obed-Edom, and he hosted the ark in his home for three months. And so the Lord said that, um, well, the Bible says clearly that when he did this, the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. And so the news got to um, David, and David got jealous and decided to get the ark back from Obed-Edom. And so we really felt that in this season, the Lord is calling us to host his presence. So that's been a personal word to us. But then we realized there's actually a word that connects with the wider, wider church, that the Lord is breaking the church out of the four walls, which he has done that. You know, we've been singing the song, Spirit Break Out, Break Our Walls Down. We had no idea that it was going to start in this way, manifest in this way. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say God is behind COVID-19 in that God has initiated it. I'm just trying to say God is using this to break the church out of the four walls. Mm -hmm. And here we are, the Lord is breaking us out and he's actually wanting us to be more effective. And I think the home is going to be a center for that. So our homes are going to be centers for revival now. And it's not just going to be us going to the church, but our homes, we're going to start to host the presence of God and communities will be, very, will be much more impacted in that way. It's like instead of men coming to the church, we're going to be taking the church to the community. Wow, oh, that's awesome. And, and how crucial um, is, is prayer in this time, do you think, as, a, as everything that's happening in the nation? Oh, you know, I think more than ever, you know, it, it, it's time to pray. In fact, I remember posting a picture on my Instagram stories of um, a newspaper 
front page when uh, Boris Johnson was in hospital, the Sun newspaper, That's front right. page article, he said something, stay at home and pray for Boris now. It, the, I can't remember the exact wording, but the point is they, they were calling for prayer for Boris. And it just struck me, human nature, because it, in our media here in the UK, as you know, Andrew, you don't hear people talk about God. You don't hear people talk about prayer. And in fact, people mock Christians mostly in the secular media. And so, it, 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 just a side note, you notice that people don't tend to mock Muslims in the secular media, but they do mock Christians, mm -hmm. and they often even mock the name of Jesus, use his name in vain. However, when crisis comes about, you find that people start to turn to something else. They start to realize we need to turn to something outside of ourselves, because this is out of our control. So even a newspaper such as The Sun on their front page is calling people to pray. And I believe in this season, unbelievers, people that have never prayed before are praying, saying, God, help me. It might just be a single prayer of, God, if you're real, help me. I guarantee you there's so many prayers like that going on all across the nation and the nations right now. So more than ever, we, the people of God, who in many ways have a direct connection with the throne because of Jesus, are supposed to be showing people the power of prayer. Now, I'm not trying to say every single thing we pray for, because, I mean, let me just backtrack a bit. I'm not trying to say no Christian is ever going to get the virus, or every single person we pray for is completely going to be healed every single time, 100%. But I'm trying to say that we have a privilege to reach the throne of heaven and draw people to the reality of a relationship with God. And in that, we can see deliverances, in that we can see healings. So I've got an example of someone we prayed for that, you know, had the virus and they died. And I've got an example of someone we prayed for that had the virus and they miraculously were delivered. And there are many stories like that. But Psalm 91 is a key scripture of this time for many believers. And it's about, you know, dwelling in the secret place with the most die. And even though a thousand may fall at one side and 10,000 at the other side, it will not come near you. And many people are confessing these scriptures. And I believe in the power of the scripture. So to answer your question right now, I believe more than ever, this is the time for the church to arise in prayer. Now, I like to use this kind of, oftentimes I communicate it this way. Show me the person, the Christian, that knows how to pray intensely without crisis. And I show you the believer that's rightly aligned to handle the crisis when it arises. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying in crisis. In fact, so we're going to say something, to Andrew. Show me the Christian that knows how to pray effectively without crisis, and I will show you the believer that's rightly aligned to handle the crisis when it arises. Now, anyone can pray intensely or cry out to God in a moment of crisis. There's nothing wrong with that. And God wants us to call out to him. He says, call out to me and I'll hear you. Call out to me and I'll show you great and mighty things you do not know. He wants us to pray. He wants us to seek him. However, many people only call out to God in a moment of crisis. And this is a moment where lots of people are praying. The engagement level in prayer is more like it's never been before. However, God is wanting us to go beyond just the crisis and go into relationships. And that means we're going beyond just the circumstance and we're going to a place of heart connection, communication, and things begin to change because when we have that heart communion and in intimacy, when I say intimacy, I mean a close relationship with God, then we begin to see our circumstances different. And it, we even begin to see suffering different. It's not that we don't feel the pain and we don't feel the loss that many people around us are feeling, but we begin to have a different perspective because of our proximity to the throne of God. And more than ever, this is a great opportunity for the body of Christ to draw near to God in the place of prayer. Go beyond the crisis, go into the place of intimacy, and yes, pray into the crisis, pray for deliverance, but even beyond that, seek a closer relationship with God. Oh, that's awesome. Um, you spoke earlier on about you, you have a heart for revival, to see a great awakening in our yeah. land. Um, where are we, do you think, as a, as a nation? Do you think that God is going to use this to see that great awakening? That um, and, and what? Kind of where, where do you feel that revival and an awakening is right now in terms of uh, God's heart for the UK? Do you think we're we're closer, we're further away? What should what should our response be for those of us that are believing and contending for a move of God? Give us some 
Hopefully. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're closer than ever. And I know that can sound a bit cliche because lots of preachers, revival is coming, you know, get ready, get ready, get ready. I understand that. That, that sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I've heard that over and over again. However, this is kind of different because when I think of a great awakening, it's like, the, it's like you, know, you know those padlocks that have different combinations and once you get all the combinations right, the padlock opens. Mm -hmm. I feel like this crisis is like one of those combinations, mm -hmm. one of those key factors and things are building up. I don't know necessarily all the combinations that need to come together for there to be a great awakening where it's obvious that society has changed. I don't know what that's going to look like in terms of, no, let me just rephrase. I don't know all the combinations and I'm saying, okay, this is it, this is it, this is it. But I can confidently say this crisis is one of those combinations, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So more than ever, we're nearing a greater explosion because it's drawing people to God, because the church is praying, because the church is beginning to seek God. And so I am convinced that God is at work in the midst of this. And, you know, the great scripture, what the enemy meant for evil, God is actually going to use this, turn it around for his good. After we, when we come out of this, things are going to be completely different. There's no way we're going to go back to life the way it was pre-COVID-19. It's going to be like 9-11. You know, 9-11 happened and the world changed. The same way, this is going to change not just the world, but the church, the expression mm -hmm. of the church. And whatever the church is going to emerge into from this crisis is going to be nearer, I believe, the church that's having the right wine skin to handle the new wine of a great awakening. Because the great awakening we've been praying for, there's no way that could have fitted in the wine skin we had pre-COVID-19. And God is actually using this to shake our structures. And there's a, there's a word the Lord has been stirring in my heart. It's a long word, but I'll summarize it. It's, you know, when uh, uh, Uza, Uza was holding the Ark uh, the Ark of the covenant was being carried on a cart and David and the musicians were dancing and singing and they taken the ark on the cart and then they were taken into Jerusalem but the scriptures clearly say the ark was never supposed to be carried on a cart the ark was always supposed to be carried on shoulders now even though the ark was carried on a cart God did not interfere with their wrong order he just let them carry on what they were doing until they got to a place and the Bible says they got to a place called the threshing floor and the threshing floor is a place of separation the wheat from the chaff it's a place of bringing clear distinction what is righteous and what is unrighteous what is holy what is unholy and so at that threshing floor it says the oxen stumbled because they'd reached a specific moment where God was starting to bring exposure because they couldn't they couldn't go any further with their desire for more of God, without God's order being released into their situation. <laughs> I'm getting stirred right now, just think about that. They couldn't go any further, crying out for more of God without God bringing a shaking to their system because they had been having the wrong structures and the wrong systems in place. And those systems could not handle the weight of the glory. It was never meant to be on the oxen. And so when Uzu tried to stable the presence to maintain the system that they'd had pre-COVID-19, judgment came on him. Mm. I'm trying to just embellish into our culture. I don't know if you, you're getting what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's his name? Uzu tried to stable the ark to go back to the structure and the system that was not in God's agenda if they were going to move any further. And so judgment came and that structure was shaken. And now Obed, Obed Edom has the ark. Then David inquired of the Lord and realized that the ark was never meant to be on the oxen. The ark was meant to be on human shoulders. Mm. And when the ark is on human shoulders, you know what that means? The people carrying the ark feel the weight. They feel the pressure. They feel the pain. And this is where God is bringing realignment because the church has been relying on systems, on external props, has been relying on all kinds of nice lights, cameras, and sound, and all these things that are not bad, but we've been relying on all this technology and in a way, technology is what we're using right now. But we've been relying on external things apart from feeling the weight of the presence on our shoulders. Let me give you an example. So 
a preacher can go online and just find an, a, a message somewhere or something that someone preached in America or somewhere that works and just learn that message and re-preach it to their congregation. Well, they are taking something that worked elsewhere and just re-preaching it. They're not feeling the weight on, it, on their shoulder <laughs> because they have not pressed in prayer. They've not pressed into God in fasting. Because when you press into God in prayer and fasting, you're starting to feel the weight. So what's happening right now is even believers that are used to just going to church, they're beginning to feel the weight because now God is saying to them, okay, you've been relying on all these meetings, but where are you really in your intimacy with me? So now they begin to feel their spiritual barrenness. They're beginning to feel their, uh, their spiritual uh, just depravity. And God is actually using the shaking to invite them into the place of feeling the weight on their shoulders, which means they would have to carry the presence. They're, it's like, I call it spiritual responsibility. So every believer is entering this space right now, I believe, those who are sensitive to the Lord, where the Lord is actually beginning to entrust each believer with spiritual responsibility. And you begin to carry the ark on your shoulders, not just relying on a system, to carry the ark for, for you, but God is wanting you to carry his presence in a new measure. Wow, that's so good, so powerful. Come on, love it. If you're just tuning in, I'm here with James Aladrin. He leads a ministry called Prayer Storm based in Manchester in the north of England. Uh, keep liking the video, commenting, sharing. Um, James, already you just shared so much. What I, what I want to do in the kind of the second half of this interview is just move away a little bit from COVID-19 um, cause I know this will be up on YouTube. And so there'll be people watching this in kind of months and years to come. Hopefully there will uh, be <laughs> no COVID-19. Um, so I just wanted, uh, just the, the, the last part of the, of the, the conversation with you today, just to talk a little bit more about prayer in general, if that's okay. And, yes, absolutely fine. Uh, could I ask you about your, um, your kind of own prayer life and, um, the, how do you keep your fire burning in prayer? Is it always easy? You know, as someone who kind of watching from the outside, I just kind of get the impression that you never don't feel like praying, that you can pray <laughs> every moment of every day. You're always in prayer. That's all you do. It's just the easiest thing in the world. Um, but I would imagine that that is, uh, is not always the case. Um, yeah. So how do you keep that? How do you keep that fire? How do you keep that motivation for prayer? What do you do when you don't feel like praying? Do you kind of press in anyway, or do you wait for that spirit of prayer to come? Um, Absolutely. Talk a, Absolutely. About that. All, all, all the above. All the above. See, the fact that I talk about prayer, the fact that I'm passionate about seeking God and prayer and teaching on prayer, doesn't mean I always want to pray because the flesh is often at war with the things of the spirit. The things that are often of most benefit to us spiritually are sometimes the things that our flesh doesn't want to do. The things that are often most benefit to us in our spiritual development are often the things that you find that your flesh resists the most. And so in this time, I believe God is wanting us to develop such an awareness of spiritual things that when our flesh is resisting, we're still saying yes. So practically, you know, when I was single, uh, when I wasn't married, I had many hours <laughs> to pray. I had, I, I mean, sometimes I'll spend hours, hours, hours just pressing into God. And I still do that now, every now and then. But the point is now I have a family. I have two kids. I've got a baby. I've got, a, you know, six-year-old. And we're all at home. My wife is homeschooling. So life is a bit more chaotic in many ways. And so the, the, the way my prayer life looks in this season is very different to what it looked like when I was single. And I believe God appreciates and understands the different seasons of life. A mom who's got four kids, you know, and, you know, all on the six or all on the eight or whatever the age group, you know, who has a lot to do at home. The way they will be able to manage their time, they will, they will have a lot of responsibilities around them. But the, the key thing is in the midst of all the responsibilities that we can still keep God a priority and we can still create space to seek him. That is absolute. That's of absolute necessity. So when I don't feel like praying, I think the key thing is honesty. Be real with God, be real with yourself and be accountable. So, you know, the times I'll say to myself, Rebecca, I'm just not feeling uh, like doing this. And you know what? I'm glad I married someone that would always encourage me. James, come on. It's not about your feelings, which is why I preach all the time. Basically, she repreaches my message back to me. 
<laughs> James is not my feelings. Come on. We're going to press into God. And I love that. So when I don't feel like praying, one, I'm absolutely honest with God about it. I say, Lord, I don't feel like doing this, but I know I'm going to do this because I know the power of what takes place. Whether I feel it or not, I know there's power in prayer. So I commit myself to the discipline. So this is it. I have a desire, but that desire needs to be cultivated. And that desire cultivated over time is going to grow. However, desire without discipline will eventually dissipate. So there has to be a system that you have in your life to cultivate desire. When your desire level is going low, you need to know the things you can turn to that will feed, increase your desire for God. Because prayer really fundamentally starts from the place of desire for God. So the enemy is fighting your appetite. The enemy is fighting in your emotions. He's trying to distract you. And your appetite level is not where you need to be for God. Because oftentimes you've been fellowshipping with lots of other things apart from God. So all you need to do is just evaluate what you're spending your time on. And just ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to things resources, worship, people, whatever it is, things that would be like fire, things that would be like fuel to your fire, like pour, pouring gasoline on your, on your fire that's flickering, and all of a sudden you just begin to burn. So for example, I know certain people I would listen to. I know certain things I would turn to when I'm in a place of feeling dry. And I often like to say, you know, um, have you ever been around believers that maybe you, you go around to see a Christian or you're hanging out with someone after church and after you spend time with them, these, this is what you're thinking, oh my goodness, am I even a Christian? Mm. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. <laughs> or you spend time with some incredible uh, 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 person and you're like, oh my goodness, Lord, am I even saved? You know, where their walk with God is challenged you so much. You're like, God, am I saved? I mean, you know you're a Christian, you know you're saved, but they've so challenged you. You're like, oh gosh, I feel like I need to just, I, I feel like I'm starting again. See, those are the kind of people, those are the kind of books, those are the kind of things you need to get around you. And we live in a time where, you know, YouTube, we've got so many resources out there. Just put on some worship, put on a, a preach here or there, something that you know will be like petrol on your flame. Get those things around you when you're feeling dull and recognize that it's normal that the flesh would war against the spirit, but you have to make a decision to go after the things of the spirit. There's a lot more I can say about that, but I don't know if you want to come back to uh, ask me any more questions on that. Uh, Andrew. Uh, yeah, no, I was going to just talk to us. Um, I, it kind of links in about the, I've heard this phrase uh, before talking about the spirit of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess is that that would be the difference between you're just kind of praying out of discipline. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's, there's a grace that comes, there's an anointing that comes, uh, and, uh, and there's a more of a, I guess, more of an ease there. And that's when you come into desire. Does that, does that kind of make sense? It does make sense. I think in spiritual terms, when you do something consistently enough, hmm. uh, over and over again, in the spirit realm, you attract the spirit of that thing you're doing. So that could be positive or negative. So you could start out lying. Maybe you've never lied before, but you just lied. You could just be a sin of the flesh, just lied. But if you keep on lying, you're going to now attract a spirit of deceit and a spirit of, are you with me? You attract the spiritual dimension because of your consistent activity. It's like your activity uh, be, uh, creates an altar, so to speak, in the realm of the spirit. And you know, altars are powerful all through scripture. And people who engage in spiritual realities on the dark side and often and also on the light side understands the power of altars. So the consistency of an activity attracts you to the spiritual dimension of that activity. So now when we come to prayer, you see that when you start to pray consistently, you can draw on a grace that is already available. Now, that's not to say that because the challenging thing is some people will look at uh, someone who prays for, I don't know, five hours or six hours. By the way, I've not been praying for five hours, six hours today, just to make that clear. <laughs> Someone's going to, but there are times I will play, pray that long. It's not every day I'm praying extensively in that way, but I would love to do more of that. Now, someone can look at another person who's prayed for six, seven hours and go, wow, they've got such a grace and a gift of prayer. Well, I guess I don't have it, so I am not going to pray. So th th that is where it gets a bit 
tricky because people can look at someone and say, well, you've got the grace, I don't, or you've got the gift and I don't, so I am not going to pray in that way. However, the fact that someone has, uh, let me just backtrack, there's no, such, there's no such thing as a gift of prayer. Mm. I've not seen that in scripture. There's no such thing. I've not seen a gift of intercession. There is a spirit of grace and supplication, and there is a grace that can come on your prayer. Okay. So I have experienced both dimensions. Okay. I've experienced the place where I am in my own will and discipline, deciding to give myself to prayer. And I've gone into the place of prayer. And I started praying and I thought an hour had gone by, but I looked at my time and only two minutes had gone by. Mm. I know what that feels like. But on the other hand, there are times where I go to pray and I think five minutes has gone by and an hour, an hour and a half and two hours has gone by because I've stepped into something of a manifestation of the grace of God. Now, I can't say to you, I experience that every single day. No, I, I don't experience that. In fact, I must say, I experience more the other aspect of, in my own will, deciding to give myself to the place of, uh, to the place of seeking God in prayer. And then there are times where the grace of God comes and there is such a release in those times. But I don't just wait for those times and go, you know what? I don't feel any grace today. So I'm, you know what? I'm just not going to pray because I don't feel it. No, no, no. We, we, we don't live by feelings. You know, we, we're believers, not feelers. So there is a, there's a place of, uh, uh, of um, discipline and consistency and in that place, the Lord would come with his grace. I think this picture, I'll, I'll share this picture and then I'll summarize. So uh, in uh, James 5, it talks about um, uh, Elijah being a man just like us. And he mm -hmm. says, Elijah was a man just like us. And you know, the Bible says, Elijah prayed earnestly that there'll be no rain. And there was no rain for three and a half years, no rain. And then the Bible says, Elijah prayed again. And you know what it says? The heavens gave rain and the earth produced its fruits. Listen to this. If the heavens gave rain after three and a half years of no rain yeah. and the earth produced its fruits after three and a half years of no rain, it means some farmers were faithful to sow seed in the dust. Wow, that's so good. Some farmers kept seed in the ground in the middle of the drought. Mm. Because somewhere in their hearts, they knew the rain was coming. Mm -hmm. And I want to say to you watching this right now, you may be feeling like your prayer life right now is like you were sowing seeds in the dust. You better keep sowing those seeds because I'm telling you, the rain is coming. And when the rain comes, there better be seed in your ground. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep sowing seeds when it's hard, when I don't feel like praying, when I feel like praying, when it feels like things are difficult, when it feels like things are easy, when it feels like I'm having a breakthrough, when it feels like I'm not having a breakthrough, when it feels like God is answering my prayers, when it feels like God is answering my prayers, I have set myself to seek his faith because I know the rain is coming and there is no way I'm going to seek him diligently and he will not reward. The key word is diligence. He is a rewarder of those who diligently, the diligence is consistency. It's not just one day here and there and every now and again when I feel like it, it's the consistency. And you have to be diligent because there'll be times you don't want to do it, but because you've set yourself to seek his face, he honors your commitment to seeking his face on a regular basis. Wow, that's so powerful, awesome. I have uh, kind of two uh, questions in closing um, and then we're, we're just going to wrap this up. Um, first question is, um, talk to us for a moment about worship and how worship and prayer work together. Because I know you, you're a worshiper as well as a, as a, as a, a man of prayer. Maybe those two are the same. Um, and then the second question, um, just talk to us about the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit helps us pray. Um, Paul talks about how the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. And, uh, and again, just, just, so just take two minutes on each question, if that's okay. Just okay. talk to okay. us about worship and prayer and the Holy Spirit and prayer. Okay. So worship and prayer, I'd say worship and prayer are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. In that in worship, we come into agreement with who God is. Mm -hmm. In prayer, we come into agreement with what he wants to do. So worship and prayer really connect. And when you have a sneak peek into the throne room, 
like we see in Revelations. You see worship and prayer. You see a combination, you know, of, of, of the two going together. And effective prayer oftentimes comes from that place of a heart that's postured before God in a place of worship. Because really, effective prayer is discerning and hearing what's on God's heart and just repeating it back to him. So we come into agreement with God. So worship and prayer go hand in hand. And oftentimes when we have meetings, even like we do here at home, I mean, sometimes we start straight off just with prayer. But I find that when we're wanting to go into a deep place in contending, in intercession, certain times I find that worship is such a valuable uh, place for us to get into the realm of the spirit. Now, we're already in the realm of the spirit. I don't want to go deep into this. I'm trying to just make it really brief. We're we're already spiritual beings. But when we begin to worship, we take our eyes off ourselves and we focus on the throne. And it's one of the major gateways into the spirit realm. And once we engage the throne room from the place of worship, while our eyes are fixed on the throne, we are in a good position to pray effectively. So from that place will come effective prayer. From that place will come declarations. From that place will come effective intercession. So worship and prayer absolutely go hand in hand. The second question you were asking about the Holy Spirit, I would say, one of the key uh, manifestations of the Holy Spirit I've experienced in the place of prayer is what we would call the, 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 uh, the prayer language, which comes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You know, you quoted that scripture in uh, Romans 8 that says, we don't know how we should pray as we ought to, but the Spirit enables us with prayer. Sorry, the Spirit enables us to pray with words, uh, pray with groanings that are beyond what our words can can articulate. So th- there's a groaning that comes from the spirit and it's not words because prayer is actually beyond just natural words. It's spiritual. And so when we come to the place of prayer, you have got to first admit that you are limited. Your natural mind is limited. There's lots you don't know. Maybe you've listened to the news and you're like, okay, God, I want to pray about that. But what you think you want to pray about to God from what you heard on the news is actually distorted information. And God sees the right thing of what's actually going on and what needs to happen. So you may come to God saying, Lord, I want to pray for this, this, this. And God is like, yeah, your heart is good, but you're misinformed. You don't really get the, the, the right picture. And the reason why I'm sharing that is when we want to pray effectively, one of the ways we can do that is leaning on the Holy Spirit. And one of the amazing gifts that we've been given as the church is the ability to pray in tongues, inspired by the Holy Spirit. This should not be confused with the gift of tongue that requires interpretation. That's a whole nother teaching. However, I want to say one of the most powerful weapons we have in prayer is speaking to God in a new language, is a heavenly language. And in Acts 2, Peter says, this gift is for you. And it's for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. So it's not for specific, just specific handful of people. It's for everyone that surrendered their life to Jesus. They have the, uh, the access is there for them to step into this grace. And when you begin to pray in the spirit, when I say that, there are different dimensions to that. But when you begin to pray in tongues, you start to enter into a place of praying with the Holy Spirit. And I found this in my prayer life, even as of today, praying in the Spirit, how it impacts my emotions, how it impacts my mind. Because sometimes I don't know what words to pray. But as I'm praying in tongues, my spirit is being set on fire. And I'm sensing oftentimes a stirring and also a revelation begins to come because I'm speaking a spiritual language that God is giving my spirit and it's coming out through my mouth. So there's a spiritual transaction going on. That's one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit prays through us when we submit ourselves to him and allow him to release that heavenly language through us. That's awesome. Uh, James, if people want to find out more about you, your ministry, they want to hear your teachings or be involved in some of these uh, prayer sessions that you're doing online, how can people connect with you uh, more? Oh, thanks for asking that. Uh, we'll, we'll love you to connect if you're free and would like to join us on one of our live streams. Uh, we're doing these every night. So 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. for the foreseeable future. We'll be doing that. We don't know how long. You can find out about that at prayerstorm.org from our website. But obviously, you can find us on all the social media platforms, the main ones anyway. If you go on Facebook and type in prayer 
and Storm, two separate words, you can find us there. Same thing on YouTube, Prayer Storm. You can get all the uh, previous videos of all the worship sessions and all the things we've been doing. They're all on there and there'll be a massive blessing to you. And also on YouTube, we have a lot of our teachings on there too. So uh, just feel free to check that out. Awesome. Well, I would love it if we could um, close today's um, kind of time together with you just praying for us. Uh, maybe yeah, you were sure. talking there about people uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe there's people that, that right now watching this, that they've never spoken in tongues before and we can yeah. be filled with the Spirit. And just generally just pray whatever's on your heart for anyone watching this. We know that people are going to be at all kinds of different levels in their prayer life. Yeah, and yeah, God, yeah. Uh, but we, we believe that God can do powerful things. So if you're watching amen, right amen. now, if you're able to, if you're, uh, I know you may be watching this. I don't know. You may be driving in the car, so don't close your eyes if you're doing that. But uh, for those who are able to, why don't you just close your eyes, raise your hands, and uh, yeah, check Jesus. Pray for a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, Lord, about David, his today. Hey, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your spirit of grace and supplication. Just as we've been saying, Lord, we don't know how we should pray as we ought to, but you are the one, Holy Spirit, that baptizes us with your power and your presence enabling us to seek the Lord. So Father, I'm asking for that over everyone watching right now, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, a fresh baptism of the spirit of grace and supplication right now in the name of Jesus. I just break off every yoke, every burden, every anxiety, every worry that has been weighing your shoulders down, even that which has been attacking your mind, where there's been a constant battle raging in your mind right now. I just speak the peace of God over your mind and I come against that demonic spirit that's just releasing those arrows in the name of Jesus. I declare that those arrows of the enemy right now begins to backfire over you. That where the enemy may come in like a flood, the standard of the Lord is raised up in the name of Jesus. And every fiery dart being fired against you right now is completely destroyed. I speak that over your mind. I speak that over your emotions. I speak that over your heart right now. And even right now, as you're agreeing with me in this prayer, let there be a quickening in your spirit. Let there be a quickening in your heart. Father, release the spirit of intercession, the spirit of grace and supplication. Let the weights, the burdens lift. Let the blurry vision be clear in the spirit, Father. Let there be a sharpness restored. Let the spirit of prayerlessness and lethargic dullness begin to break off the people watching right now in the name of Jesus. I break that off you in Jesus' name and I release the spirit of grace. I release the spirit of love and a sound mind over you. And those of you watching right now that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, I want to be filled with you right now. Holy Spirit, baptize me afresh. Maybe you've never prayed in tongues before, but you've given your heart to Jesus. That's very important. You have to have a place of surrender to the Lord where he's not just your savior, but he is your Lord. So if you haven't done that, now is a good time to do that saying lord i surrender my heart to you i surrender my life to you forgive me of my sins i recognize my ways how they have not been in alignment with your order and lord i turn away from my wicked ways and i say yes to you i repent of whatever you might want to name certain things lord i repent of this i turn away from that and i surrender my heart to you now with your hand raised right now with your hands raised just begin to ask the holy spirit to fill you afresh this is what the scripture says in acts 2 he says they were they they spoke as they uh, as the holy spirit gave them utterance so they spoke in tongues as the holy spirit gave them utterance so the holy spirit gave the utterance and they did the speaking the holy spirit is not necessarily going to come and going to come and do the speaking for you you do the speaking and he gives the utterance and often listen it's not going to be english in fact at first you might think one earth is coming out of my mouth just step out. You know, it's like those box of tissues. You take one out, another one comes. You take one out, another one comes. As you step out in faith, more comes. As you step out with the word, the syllable that might be going around in your head, as you step out, that more comes. So I'm just going to pray for you right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And just lift your hands. Father, right now, thank you for everyone watching that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Your word says, when we ask for the Holy Spirit, you will not give us anything else. So we know you're a good father and you want us filled with your spirit. So Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, let there be the release of the Holy Spirit and fire over everyone receiving everyone open to receive right now baptize them with your holy spirit in the name of jesus 
Release that right now. Now, just for a few seconds, I'm going to pray in tongues. And as I pray in tongues, I want to encourage you to step out right now. And uh, 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 Andrew, you might want to join me just for a few seconds. We're going to just release this over everyone watching right now. In the name of Jesus, a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Rima nava zeze heste ki alada bande be hakata. Ruva alada bande ve hesoto lodo via la de via la naman de via. Ruma tale zive hesto kotula naman de via. Rimi hasia katala dava hastu. Rave hesto ria bria bahata. Ramana mandi bolo de vasata. Ribe bondo vasi ve ketele ba. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Rabba bande ve hesti. Ruviasti vilini monzo vali astravia. Rutu viste bahatuni ne mahatia. Rebe banda ve hesoto lodo briaba. Fire over you right now in the name of Jesus. Fire. I just declare healings over your body right now. Reba bandi briaba. As the Holy Spirit is beginning to fill you with fire, infirmity breaks off you right now in Jesus' name. Rebe zava hande balikata. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Awesome. James, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been awesome. Thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm sure people have been blessed. If you've been blessed by this, then uh, leave us a comment. Um, it'd be great to hear from you. Uh, and uh, please do get in contact with, uh, with James and with Preston. Uh, I want to thank you again for watching. Please share the video with your friends um, on social media, on, on YouTube as well. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we'll be back with another program next week. Thank you. Thank you.